Professor Haldane, why don't we, you go first and then Mr. Hitchens. Well, um, so I, I, where I think we're in agreement is that we're seeking for a kind of tolerant humanism that can respect certain kinds of diversity, not any kind of diversity, but serious, seriously grounded diversity and difference. And I see the foundation of that as provided by respect for individuals as autonomous centers of created life, if you like. Um, and I suppose my question most basically Excuse just... Excuse me, did you say autonomous centers of created life? Created life, yeah. Uh, uh, which is also itself part of an ongoing creation, mm -hmm. I think. But I suppose my question very simply to Christopher would be this. What, what does he think grounds the values of human dignity, respect, human value, and so on, if not the kind of theological foundation that I suggested? Well, first I think um, a fairly unsentimental realism, uh, which would consist at the minimum of a recognition that we're not created, that we are evolved, and that we are in fact identifiable members of a primate species with kinship with other animals. Some people don't like to believe this, uh, or think it would be unpleasant if it was true, but it just is. So we may as well deal with that. I am generally tolerant. I love to teach arguments. I like to take part in arguments. But in this case, there is no argument about creationism versus evolution. It's over. It's been over since a debate at the Natural History Museum in this university in the mid-19th century. Um, the basis further for our morality, why is it that we think of others? Um, why, the, why do we care for them? Um, I think is equally simple, if you like just as religion is preached to the simple and doesn't require a great superstructure of theology, the principles are essentially, I would even say simplistic, but we have such a thing as human solidarity. If we didn't have it, we wouldn't have got this far. The usual statement of the moral, the nearest statement we can make of the moral absolute, the, the best approximation we've come up with is what's called the golden rule. It's variously stated, but it's usually rendered as something like, don't do to others what, it's, what you would not wish them to do to you. This, of course, makes it difficult to pass judgment on people like Charles Manson or Adolf Hitler. It, it's open to the charge that it's only as good as the person making it. Um, that's why I have a difficulty with the idea of moral absolutes, but it's, pretty, it's a pretty good approximation. There's no society ever been discovered that doesn't have some such principle. If you tell me that my grandmother's Jewish ancestors got as far as Sinai not knowing that murder and theft and perjury were bad and only then found out, I will say to you, they wouldn't have got that far if they'd been under another impression. There has been no revelation of this. It doesn't come from on high. It's innate. It's one of the things that makes up for being a primate. Um, if, there are some people who don't have it, but we call them psychopathic. Uh, and we have to reason it. Um, if Jesus and Muhammad and Abraham and Moses had never been born, which in any case I tend to doubt, or if all the stories told about them were untrue, if that was suddenly to be found and everyone had to admit it, some people I know would go into a panic. Now what will we do? We have no morals suddenly. What could be more nonsensical than that? As a matter of fact, the position we occupy would be precisely the same as it is now. If none of these texts had ever been written, if none of these supposed utterances had ever been made, we would still have to reason together about how to treat one another, about how to build a just city, and about how to have irony and a sense of humor. Um, so, that's my answer. And I think the idea that there's a supernatural dictatorship required for us to think about our duties and responsibilities to each other is the most sinister idea ever invented. These questions cannot be referred up to a celestial dear leader. We do not live and, and do not wish to live, fortunately in any case don't have to live, in a divine uh, North Korea. Thank you. Mr. Hitchens, your turn. Ah, I'll, um, already. Um.